I want you to imagine a world where depression and anxiety doesn't exist. We live in a world where one billion of us is suffering with depression or anxiety. Children as young as five are being diagnosed with clinical depression. The World Health Organization reports that every 40 seconds, a person under the age of 25 is taking their own life. What on earth happened to us? Each one of us, we come into this world fearless and free and full of possibilities. But as we grow, we lose part of who we are. So how do we hold on to that? In order to hold on to it, Oprah Winfrey says that we must fulfill the highest, truest expression of ourselves. Shonda Rhyme says that we should tune in to our hum. I believe that we need to own our shine. Being able to tap in to your power, connect to your charge. Today, I'm going to share with you how I use the power of five to change my life. This is me with my mum. My mum is Nigerian and she came to the UK on student visas. She was studying and when her visas ran out, I was six weeks old and my mum had to make a really difficult decision if she's going to bring me back to Nigeria with her or if she's going to leave me in the UK. She made the decision that she was going to leave me in the UK. So she seeked out the best parents for me. They were working with Save the Children Foundation. They're called Laura and Michael. Laura and Michael, they're a family in England that raised me, loved me, cared for me, and supported me throughout my life. When I was young, I used to feel different. Not different because my foster parents are white. Not different because my name is Iffy. Different because I saw the world really differently to my peers. My friends, they all loved parties and play dates and sleepovers, and I dreaded it. I used to be the last person to get the joke. I struggled, and I, I had the self-awareness to know that I was different. I felt disconnected. But then something happened when I was nine years old. I entered the dance studio, and there was a teacher there with blonde curly hair, bright eyes and she said come forward dancers and as I stepped forward she said I will show you the steps kneecap kneecap shoulder shoulder I thought okay I can get this and she showed me the steps and the other dancers until we all got the steps boom 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 let me hear you say well the music started and she went five six seven eight and this bolt of lightning hit me and I felt alive I was like this is amazing. So I started going to dance class three times a week. I started going to competitions. Now, I wasn't very good to begin with. I was all over the place. Oh, I was not a natural dancer. I lacked spatial awareness and I wasn't very flexible. But the way it made me feel made me want to keep going. I thought I never want to lose this feeling. I said I want to become a professional dancer. So I asked my dance teacher, how do I become a professional dancer? She said, there's lots of steps. But the first step, you need to go to a top London dance college. So I applied for a top London dance college and I got in. The night before, I planned out all my clothes. I woke up really early, did my makeup, did my hair, got dressed, packed my bag. I was excited and I bought this jumper which goes over the shoulder that says pineapple dance. So I ran out of the door, got on the train, got out the station at Covent Garden, the sun was shining. And when I arrived, there were hundreds of dancers just like me, and I felt like this is where I'm supposed to be. I went upstairs to my first class, stood at the ballet bar, ready to go. I was awful. I was the worst one there. I could see that everyone was better than me. So I said, I need to just double down. I needed to work on my technique. I needed to refine my training, but I worked hard. And there was this one ballet teacher that used to always point out 
your foot's not pointing to you. After four years of training, I graduated and I got offered my first dance paid job as a professional dancer. <laughs> I was so happy. And then after that, I was on primetime TV. I was performing all around the world. I was rubbing shoulders with the rich and famous. I was, I was living my dream and it was amazing. This one time, I was standing on stage, it's 2008. I'm at the O2 Arena. There's 20,000 people. I'm standing on stage here. To the left of me is Brian May from the band Queen. To the right of me is Paul McCartney from the Beatles. Further along on the piano is Elton John. Standing here is Alexandra Burke, a British pop star. I am singing to this big audience and I felt like this is exactly where I'm supposed to be. I got asked to go to an audition. If I was to get the job, I would be flying out to Argentina. Very excited. I auditioned and then they said, everyone put your heels on now. It's time for some strong technique. The move was step, step, hip. As my leg hit here, my supporting leg gave way and I fell to the floor and snapped my anterior crucial ligament. It was over for me. I was in hospital and this is when I started to fall into that dark place. The shine had gone. I'd lost it. I was laying in my hospital bed and I was sitting in the dark. And I was thinking to myself, there's no future for me. All I've ever known is dance. I was also around this time given the information that I have something called ASD. ASD stands for Autistic Spectrum Disorder. I'm autistic. Autism is a neural development disorder that's characterized by significant difficulties in social communication non-verbal communication. Makes sense why I struggled so much, but I had dancing. But now I don't have dancing and I have this. So as I sat there, I said to myself, what am I gonna do? And then I remembered, I was pretty good at sales. So while I was sitting in the dark, I had this vision of my life. I thought, I wanna live a great life. I want to be financially free. I want to be able to have joy. I want to wake up every day excited like I did when I was dancing. Maybe sales might work for me. Because when I was doing sales, I did it to support me while I was dancing. And I remember this one company, he came up to me, the director, and said, you're really good at sales. I said, am I? He said, yeah. He goes, you're not afraid of the word no. And I said, yeah. Because as a dancer, you go to 10 auditions and you get nine no's and one yes. So I was used to performing and being told no. So it wasn't hard for me, so I thought, maybe I could do sales. But then once again, I needed someone to show me what to do because I don't know how to run a business. So I Googled sales expert and I came up with Brian Tracy. Now Brian Tracy, has a book called The Psychology of Selling. And he talks about why are some people more successful than others? And he says successful people think differently. So then I started to read his books and many other books, and I started to break down what does it take to become successful? So I decided I'm gonna follow the steps to build a sales company. And in 18 months after working really hard, I looked up and thought, wow, I have six members of staff, I have two shareholders, and I have loads of clients. People said, how did you do that? I said, I just followed the steps. I heard a quote that Steve Jobs says. He says, if you wake up too many days in a row and don't like what you're about to do, something's gotta change. So there was me with my business, people thinking I'm successful, but I'm still waking up not excited about what I'm about to do. So I had to go and sit back in the dark. I had to sit and go, what do I like about this? I like my clients. So I went to visit many of my clients and I said, tell me, what are your biggest challenges? What are your biggest constraints? And they said, it's our staff. It's the people that work for us. They are lacking 
skills and knowledge and motivation. We're trying to help our business grow, but we're getting stuck. So I said to them, so if we can look at your fixed cost, the people, and we can empower them and support them, we'll be able to drive the revenues up and we'll be able to drive the cost down. They said, yeah. I said, I'll put something together. So I put together a 12-step program and went and delivered it to all of my clients. And they came back to me and said, wow, this is working. People are coming to work motivated and excited. They feel like they've got structure and goals. Brilliant. So I said, I'm going to put this into a book. So I got very excited and I wrote my book, Power Lift Your Career, which is a 12-step guide. And I put everything down, step by step. Something extraordinary happened. See, when I was laying in that hospital bed, I had accepted that I was never going to end up back on a stage. But the people who were reading my book happened to work for companies. So I started to get asked to go and speak to companies, 50, 100 companies, and to talk about my book. And then I got asked to go back to my own dance college. It had been 15 years since I graduated. And they asked me to go back and I spoke to 450 first year students and I spoke to them about focusing on what they want, having clarity, owning their shine, being confident, never giving up. And I was on stage and I was speaking to them and breathing life into them. And I stepped away and thought, I'm back on the stage. I'm not dancing, but I'm back on the stage. <laughs> I was connected and I was passing on. And I'm a mother of two. These are my boys. <laughs> Quincy, the big one, and Cuba, the little one. And the same thing that I said to those young students is what I say to my children every single day. I introduced them to their shine. I wanted them to recognize that there is a power within them. They have to stay connected with it because it's so easy to lose it. I get them every day to use one of these stars to say, I am somebody. I am good enough, I can do anything, I like myself, so they can build their confidence and own their shine. But what I also teach my children is something that's really important, which is why I'm here today. I'm here to talk to you about sitting in the dark. By sitting in the dark, we have the time to think about, where am I right now? Now where you are today is a result of everything that happened in the past. Where you will be in the future, is a result of everything you do today. You are the boss of your mind. And the idea of sitting in the dark is being able to visualize, to visualize and see exactly what it is that you want, and then to be able to hold it and feel the way you'd feel when you have it, and to be able to really keep it in your mind and play it over and over again like a movie. So when I talk about visualization, I talk about clarity. It's about having the clarity to see what it is that you want, but then it's the intensity to feel the way it feels. And then it's the duration, to be able to hold it in your mind 17 seconds. If you can hold a picture in your mind for 17 seconds, that's powerful. Because the brilliant thing about the mind is it, it cannot tell if something's real or imagined. So while you're holding that image in your mind with the emotional intensity, you're deriving those neural pathways, you're creating this density in your brain. You need frequency. Every day you need to be pulling it up to your mind. Let me explain. So this is my son. This is Cuba. Okay, he's 10 years old. And he said to me, Mummy, I want to be a goat. He said, a goat? He said, yeah, it means greatest of all time. I said, ooh. So I want to be a goat when it comes to table tennis. I said, okay then, I need you to sit in the dark. I need you to visualize yourself 10 years from now. I want you to see yourself at the world champions of table tennis. I want you to see yourself in the final. Close your eyes. I said, now I want you to feel the way you would feel when they say you are the winner. So we would get all excited. And the reason I want him to feel it is because the emotion drives, it drives it. And then I said to him, I need you to hold the image for 17 seconds. Do you know how hard it is to hold an image for 17 seconds? Our brain works so fast, we have 60,000 thoughts, but I need mean, to hold it. And 
then I said to him, every day, project that onto your mind, the movie in your mind. Now, why do we have to visualize? The first thing, it gets you out of bed in the morning. You've got something to move towards. The second thing, you attract into your life things that are aligned with your most dominant thoughts. The third thing is, because in 10 years time, when my son is at the World Champions and he walks in, he's not gonna be intimidated. He's not gonna say, I shouldn't be here, I'm not good enough. Because he's been there in the mind so many times. The problem with imposter syndrome is, people get somewhere and they think, I, should, I don't deserve to be here, someone's gonna find out. And then they self-sabotage by visualizing, when it happens, you're like, about time. That's why you have to visualize. I wanna leave you with five things. The first thing, decide what you want. The second thing, find someone to show you how to get there. It has to be somebody that's been there before or help somebody else to get there. You don't want to ask somebody who's never been where you want to be how to get there. You just get lost. The third thing, monitor your thoughts. Manage your thoughts. We can only hold one thought in our mind at a time. It's called the law of substitution. So if you're having a negative thought, you need to swap it with a positive. And it's up to you because like I said before, you are the boss of your mind. You have to manage your thoughts along the way. The fourth thing, you have to reinvent yourself. I am a dancer. No, I'm not. I'm a businesswoman. I was a dancer. You have to let go of who you were to become who you are. And the fifth thing you must do, you must keep pushing forward. Because along the way, you are going to get hurdles, you're going to get roadblocks, you're going to fall flat on your face. But you have to keep going, and you have to never stop, and you have to be relentless about it. Are you willing to own your shine? Yes. yes. Are you willing to become everything and anything that is out there for you. Yes. 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 My name is Ify Thomas. You all gotta own your shine. Yes.